This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at a sine function that has four characteristics. Uh, all right. So each one of these, uh, each one of these numbers is a parameter, and it's going to describe what the curve looks like. So they each tell us a little story. All right. The first number right here that's off on its own, that's not really connected you know exactly to the sine function right now that is what we call the vertical shift I'm gonna put the s right there vertical shift uh, the number that's right in front of the sine that will tell us how to calculate the amplitude the number that's a coefficient in front of this whole angle then this is our angle, the stuff that's in parentheses. So the number that's in front of all that is going to help us calculate the period. It's not the period, but it helps us calculate it. Okay, and then last, maybe if I extend this, I can actually write the word. This number that's inside the parentheses is going to tell us how to calculate the phase shift. Okay, all right, so there's a lot of detail uh, to this problem. A lot of things happening. All right, let's get the uh, easy stuff out of the way. Uh, amplitude. This number that's in front of the sign, just take the absolute value of it. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. So it's got an amplitude of 2. Takes care of amplitude. Uh, the period, well, you take 360 degrees, or you could take uh, 2 pi if you're working with um, radians, if you'd rather work with radians. Uh, we're going to divide it by 4. I like to keep in degrees. All right, 360 divided by 4. Let's see, that'd be 180, that'd be 90. 90 degrees. There's the period of this curve. All right, let's now get to vertical shift. This number over here, this negative 1, whatever the number is, that's the vertical shift. All right, and then we've got phase shift. Now we just take the opposite of this number. So if it's a negative pi over 12, it's going to be a positive pi over 12. All right, but we have a little bit of a dilemma. Uh, it looks like we're in radians here, but we're in degrees for our period. We have to be consistent. So I'm going to convert this into degrees. Now if you remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, uh, so I'm going to multiply that. It's a conversion factor. And you can see that when I multiply, the pi's are going to cancel, telling me I'm doing something right. So now you multiply straight across. You're going to get 180 over 12. Okay, grab a calculator. You uh, punch that in. It's 15 degrees. And there you go. That's the phase shift. Okay. So now this means we have all our characteristics uh, all set aside there, and uh, that's a good thing. We now can start graphing this curve. All right, now what I like to do uh, when I start doing this problem is I pretend this is a very basic problem. I'm going to put the phase shift and vertical shift on hold for a moment. If the problem had just these two characteristics, I would graph to 90. I would say, okay, I'm going to get as high as 90, as large as 90 for the period. And I'd break it up into quartiles, just like I would for any problem. Half of 90 is 45. Half of 45 is 22.5. All right, how do I get the third quartile? You add the first two quartiles together. 67.5. There you have it. I have all my quartiles, a little sloppy, but I got them all there. Now, if I was going to graph the sign using just these two characteristics, I would recall that I would start at the origin. Oh, yeah, I forgot amplitude is 2, so I'm going to go two notches up, and I'm going to go two notches down. All right, so again, I would start at the origin, like all sine curves do, unphase shifted sine curves. Just the basic sine curve starts at the origin. And first quartile, you're at the maximum. Second quartile at the origin. 
at the minimum for the third quartile and the last quartile back to the x-axis. Now I'm being very careful to draw that with open circles. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to draw the curve with dashed lines, very light dashed lines. Hopefully this will come through. Uh, but I'm just doing this with very light dashed lines because this is not the curve. I haven't done anything with uh, phase shift or vertical shift. So, all right, now let's figure out how do these last two characteristics come into play. All right, so now I want to figure out how do these two guys come into play. All right, well, phase shift just means I'm going to move, and since it's a positive 15, uh, I'm going to move right 15 degrees. So in other words, I'm going to shift this entire graph. All those points that I just uh, graphed, they're all going to move 15 degrees to the right. The vertical shift, negative 1. Since it's negative, that means I'm going to shift all the points down one unit. All right, so I'm going to do both of these two moves together, a bold move. So I'm going to go take this point that was at the origin, move it 15 degrees to the right, and one down. It's going to be right here, and I'm putting that in orange. All right, let's do this point. It's at uh, 22.52, so I'm going to move it over 15 degrees, move it down one. It'd be somewhere around over here. I'm just approximating. Just getting a good feel for what this is looking like. So the 45 gets moved over 15 degrees and then down one. Okay, this 67.5 and negative 2 that it's at, it could move to the right and then down one. All right, and then the 90 goes 15 to the right, down one. And now I have a new curve, okay? So the new curve, and maybe I should do this dashed so I can get a decent shape when I finally do get it. Okay, so it's going to look eh, not too bad. So I'm going to solid line it in now that I get a feel for what it looks like. Eh, not too curved there. It should be kind of round there. Uh, but you get the idea. Uh, the, the point is that we get these specific locations and we get those points down. Like we know that this point should be, let's see, 0 is going to be at 15, comma, negative 1. That's where this beginning point is. Okay, where's the end point? Well, it looks like the end point was 90 plus 15. That's going to be a 105. And since it was down 1, going to be at negative 1. All right, I'm making a big deal about the beginning and end because sometimes uh, on tests they want to know when does this thing begin, where does it begin, where does it end. So we sometimes say this is the interval. We say, well, it begins at 15 and ends at 105. I know it's incredibly crazy to say where this curve begins because I hear you thinking, saying, isn't this an infinite pattern? And this is just one period of it. And I would say, yes, this, period, this whole curve is an infinitely long curve that reproduces itself identically throughout the whole pattern, throughout its whole length. And this is just one pattern. But this is the beginning of our first pattern, if you want to count it as being our first uh, so it, it starts at 15 and ends at 105 for one pattern. Okay, honestly, uh, you could start it at any point and go 90 degrees to the right, and you'd have another, you know, uh, uh, picture of what this curve looks like, or at least one pattern of the curve. But uh, that's what it looks like here. All right, so uh, make sure you go to mathguide.com, check out our other videos, lessons, interactive quizzes, and activities. Take care.